Hey, what's up guys? Barry and Michael Doyle here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Expo SDK version 20 release. Now, this was just recently released, and it's based off the React Native 0.47 July release. The previous version, SDK version 19, was based off the React Native 0.46 June release, so there's been quite an update since the last SDK version. Now, what's new in this latest SDK version 20 release? Firstly, we have an improved loading screen and faster startup on Android. This is really great for Android users because a lot of developers have been noticing that the startup time for Android is a lot slower than the standalone apps are. So Expo has been working very hard on making this as quick as possible. Uh, if you're familiar with the Expo SDK 19 versions or even lower, you remember that the loading screen icon would fade in and out. Now in the newer version, it just remains static. This is to maintain consistency with the other Android applications. So there's also been more feedback on the loading screen in development. This is great for you as a developer because it's good to have that feedback knowing how long to expect things to take and seeing what's wrong sooner rather than later. Expo has also rolled back the JavaScript core update, which they have done because they found a bug in the older Android versions. They have mentioned that they'll probably add it back in as a patch later before Expo version 21. Now, Expo has dropped SDK 13. This shouldn't be a problem to most of us because Expo SDK 13 was quite a while back. Now, they have mentioned that they're going to continue dropping SDK versions as they release new things. But you don't have to stress, they are working on a long-term support project as well. This can be expected with Expo because they are fairly new. I'm assuming that by the end of the year, they'll be pretty well standing and have a good long-term support SDK build out and running. Expo has also released an ESLint configuration called ESLint Config Universe. Now I still use ESLint Config Rally Coding, which you can see in one of my videos. I'll leave a link in the description below. But this will work great for you if you want to make any Node applications, Web applications, React Native applications, or Expo projects. This should work along all your different projects which is great because universal configurations look like a charm. Although, as I mentioned, the ESLint config rally coding seems to work just fine in this as well. I do definitely recommend that you check this out anyway. Along with this update, Expo has also released various documentation changes. They've updated the publishing guide to reflect changes in update behavior on Android. This is definitely something you should check out if you're going to be upgrading your SDK version because you need to republish your applications on Google Play and the Apple App Store anyway. They've also added various API references. They've added one for the camera, secure store, payments, and the magnetometer. Now, these are all great new features. Some of them not fully implemented, but you need to check out the API references yourself to see what's going on there. I don't have time to go through this whole video to explain each one of these in detail but I will leave a reference to the blog post of this update in the description below. Expo has also performed various bug fixes and upgrades. They've done a lot of general fixes, some Expo Kit iOS updates, loads of audio and video fixes, and they've upgraded some XDE developer tools. So that said, I actually wanna show you how to upgrade your Expo project from SDK version 19 to version 20. So let's head over to some code. Yeah, we have my simple YouTube search app. I made a full series on this just before this video came out. So if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you check it out. It's a good way to get diving right into React Native with Expo. Now, currently I'm in my app.js folder. I want to head over to my app.json folder. And this is where we can check out our SDK versions. So in order to upgrade, we need to make sure that our XDE client is closed. Now, I've closed mine already, so there's no issue there, but just make sure that's closed because otherwise this will have some complications in your development. The first thing you want to change is the SDK version 19 to SDK version 20.0.0. Now, another thing we have to notice is this hide exponent text is no longer necessary because they've removed this all completely. So we can get rid of that whole tag Sorry, there's a comma there. That's why ESLint is freaking out. Now, another update that we have to do is we can save this and we need to head to our package.json. Here, we need to change our expo version to 20 as well as our React Native package over here. This needs to be changed to 20 over here. 
Now our React file didn't change at all, and neither did anything else really yet. So another thing is if you are using Jest, then you may want to pay attention to the following. I wasn't using Jest in this application, but if you are using Jest Expo, you want to change it to version, sorry, 20. And there we go, all sorted. However, I haven't been using it, so I'm just going to remove it. The final thing you want to do now is delete your node modules. Don't worry, I promise this won't break anything. Just got to move it all the way to the recycling bin because it's too large to store. Now that said, when that's finally deleted, you want to head into your application page, simple YouTube search. In my case, it's simple YouTube search. Yours could be anything. And you just want to type in npm install and then run that. I'm not going to run it now because that's going to take forever because I have to do a whole bunch of new packages, etc. But this is what you need to do if you want to upgrade your package. Finally, you want to open Expo XDE. And here I've opened my simple YouTube search application in Expo XDE. The only thing you need to do here is click restart. This will restart your package manager and everything and get everything going just how you want it to be. Once that's done, you can hit the publish button over here and it will work throughout your Expo applications. You'll have to rebuild your applications for Google Play and the Apple Store and re-upload newer versions of those applications to get your app properly running there. Other than that, that's all I have for this video, guys. If you liked the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that little bell. And I look forward to chatting to you guys and helping you guys learn new things later. Ciao!